From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny.
Please stand if you're able. Send out your light and truth, your truth that they may lead me and bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. Let us pray. Almighty God, the fountain of all wisdom, you know our needs before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Have compassion on our weakness and mercifully give us those things which for our worthiness we dare not, and for our blindness we cannot ask. Through the worthiness of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Before you sit down, turn around and just say hello to the people around you. Don't go anywhere, but, but speak. <laughs> hey, Joyce. <laughs> All right, thank you. That's as close as we come to doing our greeting, but I felt like we needed a little something uh, extra every now and then. And, uh, and so uh, I would love to say that that was my idea, but nothing new is my idea. So uh, glad to see you all this morning. And uh, just a couple of, of uh, brief announcements. Uh, first of all, I want to remind you again that uh, Mike is going to be downstairs on Sunday mornings uh, after the first service, so about 10 o'clock, till uh, whenever folks start com stop coming down, uh, as late, he'll stay as late as 1 for you if, if you want to get your picture made for the new directory. It's very, very important that we get this done, and uh, Mike's all set up and ready to go. It takes 10 minutes unless you don't smile. And... Doesn't even take that long, okay. <laughs> so just pop in, get your picture made, and uh, let's add it to the directory. Thank you, Mike, for, for doing that ministry for us. Um, at 5 tomorrow afternoon at 
630. Uh, they are continuing the hard work of uh, getting nominations ready for the, for the new year. I mean, it's halfway through this year, but you know, this kind of work takes a while. So uh, through July and August, hopefully by the end of August, uh, we will have uh, all our nominations ready uh, for, for later in the year. Um, and also uh, this week in the newsletter, I mean in the weekly email blast as, as I call it, uh, there was attached a gifts, talents, and interests survey. Uh, that is not so much for me, it will it'll probably uh, ultimately be helpful for Ad 5, but, but especially helpful uh, when a new pastor gets here. Uh, because that person won't spend the first two years trying to figure out who does what and who has already done what, uh, but will know some of your, some of your past, uh, some of your present, and some of your wishes, some of the things you would like to do. And so uh, I hope that that will be something that when a new pastor comes in, Melinda will be handing over to that person uh, a folder full of, uh, full of who you are, and what you've done. So uh, please take the time over the next couple of weeks to uh, fill that out. You can, uh, if you're really tech savvy, you can attach, you can fill it out and then attach it and send it back or you can just drop it off on Sunday morning. You can drop it on the table or sometime during the week, uh, pop in and, and give it to Melinda and that will be a very, very helpful, helpful thing. Uh, I know I didn't cover everything, but I got a lot of help from uh, folks all during the week, especially the elders who sent back and said, oh, you forgot this, or you forgot that, or why don't you add that? That was, uh, that was helpful. And if you think of things that I didn't put in there, just write it in. That'll be fine. Any other announcements this morning? And uh, I have to say, I'm going to be pressing you all on this. If we have announcements uh, during this 11 o'clock service, which is uh, the service that goes live on Facebook, we really need, I know nobody's comfortable with a microphone, but we really need you to use the microphone. So if you've got an announcement, let me know ahead of time, and I'll give you the microphone, and you can pass it on. Um, and I'll even show you how to turn it off after you're finished so that every time you wiggle during the service, it won't be picked up. So... If there are no other announcements, let's move towards our time of prayer uh, with our music for prayer. Where there's despair in life, let me bring 
we come to a time of prayer, uh, just a couple of uh, folks we would lift up this morning. Uh, Joe Jennings, I think most of you uh, may have heard this by now or seen it. Uh, Joe will be going in for his cancer surgery a week from tomorrow, going up to Charlottesville. Uh, we'll be there probably seven to eight days, and uh, Tricia told me that she would be able to go and see him at least once a day. Uh, so she'll be up there for the duration as well. So uh, be, be praying for, for them. Uh, the other folks uh, who are listed um, are there for you. And so we, we remember all these, all these folks. Uh, I think uh, some of you may have seen, and I know I talked about it, uh, sent an email out earlier, but uh, Linda May's family uh, will be having an earnment, a private earnment service uh, this week, uh, one, one evening, I think it's Thursday. Um, but they hope to have, they're waiting until the pandemic is over because what they said uh, was they wanted everybody to be able to be here, uh, to have a reception, to be able to, to be close and to be able to talk and that sort of thing. So they are, uh, they are waiting for that time. Uh, so let's spend a few moments of silence with our, our prayer list if y'all will continue to, to scroll that through and uh, let's offer prayers in silence for all these people who are on our... Yes, I'm sorry. Bill's sister Ann Brian? Okay. Cousin Dave Henning had a stroke. Okay. We will add y'all to our, to our prayer list. Thank you. Let us pray. Almighty, eternal, and loving God, we know that you hear our prayers for all these that are listed before us, for those whose names have been spoken, and those who we hold in our hearts and do not speak, but know that we seek your love and your care for them as well. Please, O oh Lord, be with each person who is in special need today. Give healing, patience, comfort, wisdom to doctors and care for nurses as they seek to do the best they can. Strength to family members who care for those who are sick and at home. Give hope to each person because of your presence in their lives. Gracious God, where we are able, make us the answer to some of these prayers. As we seek to reach out in love to these your children who need you in a special way. Make us the instruments of your peace, your justice, your hope, your message to all people that you love them. Bless us as we seek to be faithful to you. May we find you in a special way in worship this morning. May we know that your Holy Spirit touches us. Allow us to be touched. To be held in your everlasting and ever-loving arms. 
May we know that Your love is steadfast. And may we know You better by what we do here. Make us faithful people. May we reach out not only to the community of faith here that we belong to, but also to this community, to this state, to this nation, and to this world. May each one of us find that we are significant. That we are special. That we have something to give, no matter who we are. Bless us in these and all things, O God, that we may grow closer to you, better able to serve you in this world. We ask this in all things in Jesus' name. Amen. Scripture reading from Matthew 11, 25th through the 30th verses. At that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you've hidden these things from the wise and intelligent and have shown them to babies. Indeed, Father, this brings you happiness. My Father has handed all things over to me. No one knows the Son except the Father, and nobody knows the Father except the Son and anyone to whom the Son wants to reveal him. Come to me, all you who are struggling hard and carrying heavy loads, and I will give you rest. Put on my yoke and learn from me. I'm gentle and humble, and you will find rest for yourselves. My yoke is easy to bear, and my burden is light. We love those last words, don't we? My yoke is easy to bear, and my burden is light. That's what we're looking for in faith. So many times uh, we really do uh, kind of get excited by those words. But as I, as I read this, I, I realized that uh, there's, there's hard stuff in faith too. No matter how hard we want to give it all to Jesus and, and let him put a light yoke on us, uh, it's still a yoke. <laughs> Ask any ox, they will tell you. No matter how light it is or how heavy it is, it's still there. It tends to limit us a little bit, it seems like. But, but I, I remember uh, facing this really for the first time when I was in college. And in my, my uh, what we call baby theology, basic Christian theology class, the um, professor came in and started his, uh, his lecture that morning with, Christianity is full of paradox. Do you know what paradox means? Now, we didn't have phones in those days that we could Google paradox to get the right definition. And so we kind of guessed at it, uh, trying to spell it correctly so we could go to the dictionary. You remember dictionaries? Uh, dictionary and look it up. And, uh, but he, you know, he tried to explain how this thing is true, and this thing which seems to be an exact opposite is also true. And uh, when I I read this, this piece about nobody knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wants to reveal Him, I sort of stopped in my tracks, because I would think that Jesus would want everything revealed to everybody, because the more people that have got enough information, the more people who will follow Him. That's kind of the assumption. So that means that at some point there there is something not so easy about our faith. And yet at the same time, the yoke is easy to bear and the burden is light. So I thought about easy faith and hard faith. What are some of those things that are kind of easy in our faith? Well, it's easy for us to show up at church, to just show up, to just be here. Uh, it's, it's easy to be nice to our friends. Oh yeah, we're, we can be nice to our friends. That's, that's, a, that's a simple enough thing. 
Our prayers uh, sometimes only happen when we need things or we know somebody else needs something or we want something. God, can I please have that? Sometimes uh, we've set a goal. I'm going to read one page out of the Bible or one chapter out of the Bible or one piece of the Bible every day. And, and all this year, that's, our, that's my goal, is to read, read the Bible. And so when we get finished, after, after about a month into the new year, maybe that's our, our resolution, we, check, we start checking it off. And we don't pay any attention to what's being said. We just get it read, get it done. That's easy in our faith. Occasionally we, we see a need and, and we might donate, donate money to a societal need. It's easy to write a check to try to solve the world's problems. And so those are some of the things that, that faith is kind of easy. We don't have any real challenges uh, sometimes with those things. Then it gets to be hard, the paradox, the paradox. Hard faith is showing up at church and actually worshiping while you're here encountering God instead of just encountering the same old same old stuff being kind to people being loving to people who don't like you don't agree with you have made it clear that they don't trying to be nice to those people is the hard part of faith and yet it is part of our faith Jesus called it turning the other cheek going the extra mile and he made it clear that wasn't, he wasn't joking about those things. Hard faith is praying even when you don't get what you want out of it. When you don't get the answer you're hoping for. When you don't get the good news. But still knowing that God is there. Still knowing God is with you no matter what. That's hard faith. That's hard faith. Hard faith is taking a stand for those people in the world that Jesus loves. The poor, the marginalized, those folks who are on the, the edges of society and, and, in, uh, and possibly getting ready to fall off the map of, of being able to be seen by the rest of us. That's hard faith. Jesus called it taking up your cross and following me. He called it, go and sell all that you have and give to the poor and follow me. One of the things that I learned uh, fairly late in my education was that the cross that Jesus carried, I realized I've moved away. I've, I made it sure this morning I was still distanced enough from everybody. I'm not coming any closer, Joyce, don't worry. But... The cross is actually what they used to, they said that actually when they carried their cross, they carried the heavy cross beam. And it wasn't a light piece of two by four, like we might hammer together for a worship service or to put outside the church during Advent. It was a real beam, and it was heavy enough by itself. We know that because Jesus fell several times as he carried his cross uh, to Golgotha. No matter whether it's a whole cross or a cross beam, it's still what Jesus said is heavy. And he wasn't saying, oh, pick it up, you can pick, throw it over one hand. You know, throw it over one arm, no. When I was a child, the thing that, that used to stop me when I, was, when I was listening to sermons is whenever the minister read uh, anything about going and selling all that you have, even though I was a little kid and didn't have much, I still tried to imagine that. How in the world would you survive if you went and sold all that you have and, and gave it to the poor and then followed Jesus? What would that look like? Well, as an adult, I actually got to experience that because a fellow rolled in one day uh, to our little town and uh, he rolled into our church in a, in a little car, well, not a little car, but a car with an RV attached to it. And he said he had... He had gone and sold everything as the Bible taught him. And he believed that Jesus had called him to travel to churches to witness to the fact that you didn't have to go through life burdened, as he called it, by all your stuff. And he asked if he could have a few minutes 
to speak in the worship service, just to witness. And I very bravely, being 30, 31 years old, said, you know, why not? <laughs> but he was true to his word. He only spoke four or five minutes. And then he sat down. But I noticed that after church, there were more people around him than there were after me. I think his message in five minutes said more to people than my 15 or 20 minute sermon. I was a little jealous. Just a little. But I also had a little bit of admiration for him. I thought it was pretty risky. I thought, I, you know, I, I wouldn't encourage everybody to do that. Uh, somebody said, uh, you know, how did he get an RV? Well, he got an RV because somebody gave it to him because he was sleeping in the back of his truck. People aren't giving away RVs. I, I, I do understand that they are, they are not free. And this wasn't anything big and fancy. And it had been all over the country because he just traveled. People fed him. Uh, people gave him money. Uh, and he wasn't begging. He never asked for anything. He just told his story and how he felt like God had called him to do this. That's hard faith. I don't recommend it. He did not recommend it. But he was so full of love of God that he felt like it was important to let people know that there's a different way to live. I encountered uh, a, an example of this also in, in a movie about St. Francis of Assisi. Maybe some of you saw it. Brother, Son, Sister, Moon. There's some beautiful music in there. And I hope over the next few weeks to, to be able to use some of it during worship. But uh, in that movie, uh, Saint, it ex explains how St. Francis uh, decided that what he needed to do as he heard God, was to sell all that he had, uh, give it to the poor, and follow Jesus. And so his, his middle class, upper middle class father, who was a garment sale, uh, salesman, a tradesman, uh, in, a, in a, the burgeoning middle class was beginning in those days, um, you know, just said, Francis, you've got to get to work. You've got to come and work in the family business. And and Patrick, uh, Francis wasn't having any part of it. So what he did was he, in a, in a symbolic thing, and it's, uh, the movie is supposedly taken from what he actually did, uh, in front of the bishop and everything else, he just takes off all his clothes and drops them and walks out of church. And uh, so I don't recommend that either. But at the same time, I think that, that when we're looking for examples to see these, some of these radical examples tell us that there's something going on in these people's lives and it's something that, that we as Christians uh, have to confront. The paradox of my yoke is easy, go and pick up your cross and follow me. Here's the good news. The good news is that God calls us to do what we're able to do. And God walks with us no matter whether we're successful or not. Because God loves us no matter what. Whether we are able to go the way of hard faith and be those strong witnesses who can turn the other cheek, who can love anybody, or can at least show love no matter what, or whether we're one of these folks who are looking, as I, I like to call it, uh, my recliner faith, the holy recliner that says, come to me all you who are struggling and tired and I will give you a recliner. Jesus is there for all those folks. For all of us, wherever we are, God's love is there and God is saying, constantly come to me come to me no matter what come to me whether you're willing to go every extra mile every time you reach the end of one you're ready to go again come to me if you're struggling and you're you're losing your faith and you're doubting come to me no matter what the yoke that is easy to bear is the yoke that Jesus is helping us to carry the burden that, that is light is light because Jesus is helping us to carry it. Amen.
taste of heaven and blue Come to the table of plenty God will provide for all that we need Here at the table of plenty Oh, come and sit at my table Where saints and sinners are friends I wait to welcome the lost And the lonely who share the cup of my love Come to the feast of heaven and earth Come to the table of plenty God will provide for all that we need Here at the table of plenty of sorrow and more My wine will flow like a sea of gladness to flood the depths of your soul the peace Jesus said, Come to me, all ye who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. We come here today because we need rest. We need peace in a world that seems to have been turned upside down. A world where we have social distancing, curbside pickups, and little contact with family. When we come and sit at this table, there is no social distancing needed. Jesus puts his loving arms around us, holds us, and listens to our troubles. There was always room at this table. Everyone is welcome to receive the peace of God. Let us pray. Dear God, our Father, we come to this table today to seek the peace that you offer through your Son, Jesus Christ. Help us to be patient and listen for your words, your words of comfort and words of direction. May this bread and this cup give us the strength to be patient, the strength to follow your path, and the strength to tell the world about your peace. Be with us till we meet again. In Jesus' name, amen. And on the night that he was betrayed, Jesus took the bread, he broke it, and he blessed it. And he said, eat this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup and he said, this is my blood, which is shed for you. Drink this, all of it.
stand if you're able. And now God send us forth to be your people in hard times and easy ones, to be your hands and feet and voice to a world that is broken and needs your holiness. Send us forth, O oh God, with your peace and your blessing. In Jesus' name.